We're modding the cover for the controller. We're adding some much needed little details to the parts we've already fabbed. Slowly grinding our way towards that next milestone of putting all the new pieces onto the frame. We got all that coming up and more, so let's go. Eventually, this piece I've been working on for quite a long time is going to have to be finished out. And that entails making this top surface completely smooth, which means I have to fill all four of these holes. I could probably just fill these holes with filler rod, but I figured it might be a little easier if I cut out some little tabs to take up a lot of that space first. There's always these parts in the builds that I would consider not super exciting, although I do intend on showing you guys pretty much all of the steps I take to make all of the things that I do. And it's usually these small detailed parts that end up eating up a ton of time, but they're necessary for the progression of the final build. I'm also a total beginner with metal fab and welding and all that, so that is definitely adding to the time that had I had a ton of experience, these things would go much more quickly. But the only thing that really helps you getting better and progressing and becoming more experienced is actually doing the things so that's what I'm doing and hopefully in the next coming months and years I will be much more proficient at all of these things. Those custom tabs I just make are going to help with this piece and this is the controller cover. I've told you guys before that having the controller mounted below the frame is not my favorite spot and one of the reasons is because it is right behind your front wheel so all of the rocks and everything are going right into your expensive controller. Thankfully this frame did come with a controller cover that's made out of steel and it will protect the controller. The problem is that my controller is so ginormous, just like my battery, that I have to provision it so that it can actually fit over the controller. That's the kind of theme of this entire build is just trying to stuff too big of components in the frame it was designed for, so of course I have to modify this one as well. I'm just flaring out the sides of this controller cover because not only does it have to house the controller, but the phase wires coming up the side of it also have to be protected. That's the other reason why I have to shift the controller back from where I had originally mounted it because I also want to fit as many wires underneath the cover as I can because the less that are exposed to the elements, the better. Now it's time to use those little pieces I cut out to fill these holes and finally weld it all around. It doesn't really matter if they're completely flush because I'm going to be grinding them down flat after that. These things were pretty tricky to get to stay in there while I was trying to weld, but I don't have a belt sander which would definitely help in making these pieces absolutely perfect, but for now this is what I'm working with. I did end up cutting one a little too small, so I'm only going to weld on three for now and I'll hit that other one later. My welding definitely has gotten a lot better, but I was having trouble on this long run and I think it has to do with me not prepping the surface too well. I'm pretty sure it was because there was some paint still left where I was trying to weld and that was making it so the puddle didn't really want to creep up on one of the sides. It also could be because I didn't have enough amps going. I got to play around with it some more but I am definitely feeling a lot more comfortable welding. Some of these bigger runs were actually pretty good but some of them are pretty terrible so when I say I'm more comfortable welding it only means I'm more comfortable not that I'm better at it. I was trying to stress the seat that I had just welded on in the last episode and trying to get it to flex or move and the only way it barely moved was in between the two parts. It's more than strong enough, it's not going to go anywhere, but I did think that I could add some details that not only would make it look a little bit cooler but would also help stiffen it up. I could have certainly made this easier on myself but because I wanted a certain aesthetic and for it to look a certain way that required things to be a little bit more complicated. 
I could have just cut some simple pieces of the square tubing and shoved that between the two pads, but I wanted to go with something that looked more like a vent or aerodynamic, just some sort of visual difference that isn't just like a plain bar. This was a bit trickier than I had originally anticipated because I do have quite a few elements that I need lined up particularly. Also, the two planes diverge at the end, so it's kind of like a space that gets wider and wider the further it goes out. Someday I will have a chop saw so that I can just cut these at perfect exact lengths but dealing with the angle grinder I don't have my proficiency with making things that exact. I'm showing you guys so much of this and kind of my process of thinking and checking and all that and I'm doing all this to show you how much time I actually spent on just getting this small detail to work. Out of the six I was going to put on I actually recut probably four or five of them and then I tried to salvage at least one or two of the other ones to make them all complete and fit exactly where I wanted them. After a lot of measuring, recutting, regrinding, and repeating that process a bunch of times, I finally finished them. Now back to those brackets that I had cut out earlier in the video. This time they need holes in them. And you guys will see later why I need them and where I'm putting them. After a bunch of drilling, I think these parts came out pretty good. They're not perfect and they don't have to be because you're not really going to see them all that well. Now that my accent tabs are fit up, we can put them onto the seat. Okay, well I thought I was done cutting, but we need that little tab to fill the hole and then I got some other ideas on how to make this seat a little bit more fleshed out. I do want to keep the overall feel and look to be very skeletonized, but I think adding these pieces will kind of take up this negative space right here. The aesthetic problem that I'm facing right now is that this frame is massive and all the mods that I did to it just make it look even bigger. I did want a smaller and more minimalist kind of looking seat so I didn't want a huge seat or a big sweeping seat that goes over the rear tire too much. I wanted it kind of look like a cafe racer style. I'm just kind of visually seeing a disconnect between the seat and the giant frame so I'm hoping I can maybe blend that a little bit while retaining that skeletal look. Or at least that's how it is in my mind and hopefully I can execute it. Now that I have my accent braces all trimmed up and ready to go, I can tack them in place. I did manage to misalign the first one ever so slightly, but I made up for it with the rest of them, so I will be going back later and cutting one of those tacks and then repositioning it. I am going to give these guys a few more welds later on and try to get them from the underside also. If you notice that I'm not just fully blasting everything in place from the get-go, it's because a lot of these things, I'm not even sure if I like them that way. I I might want to change them later so taking off some tacks is a lot easier than a full weld.
Now, they're not perfect, but they are pretty straight, except for that one in the very rear. I am going to try to fix that one, but I'll show you some detailed shots now. And you also can take a look at my not so great weld. You can tell where I was struggling on a lot of these longer runs and I will be going over those. Some of these I've already gone over once or twice. So yeah, these are not the prettiest welds and I'm not proud of it, but this is just part of the process of getting better and having more experience. I am pretty happy with how these accent pieces turned out. To me, they just add a little bit more visual elements and the way I'm gonna do the seat pads, you will be able to see these so I think it'll end up looking pretty cool. Even though my truss structure and the seat are not fully finished to the point where it's like ready for paint I still have to do some more welding on it but at least at this point it is a functional part. Because it works and I can actually sit on it now that means that I might be able to assemble everything and get it to a point where I can do some testing. Even though it's not completely necessary to do this at this step I think it's worth it because I want to know that everything Thing is working before I do any of the finishing and final touches. Another reason why I'm doing this is because I have been working on this project for quite a while now and sometimes it's good to give yourself a break and do something that you consider to be much funner. And even though it's still far from its final form, I do want to get it to a place where I have all the parts assembled and I can even do an electronics test and make sure everything is working. Another reason why I like doing this is because if there is a problem or if I have to modify something I don't want to be doing that with fresh paint and all everything's all buttoned up. I want to knock out all the kinks before I get to that point. This is kind of the first time that I've had the battery in the bike with a seat on it and everything since I started this project so this was pretty exciting to get to this point. I was relieved to feel that the seat position is pretty much in the perfect spot for me. It is the most comfortable. I do think I could have made it a little bit longer and that might have been a tiny bit better but then I'm going to be running into where it doesn't look as nice so I'm kind of at that sweet spot between aesthetics and having it be functional. I did go back and look at a bunch of different seat setups for comparison and this is pretty much in the ballpark of where most of them land for the middle of the seat. And here's the controller cover I was working on. You can see why I needed to flare it out because this controller is huge. I don't know what kind of small controllers would fit inside of this but yeah and there's the custom brackets that I made because I need this to stand off quite a bit if I have any hopes of putting that giant phase wire off to the side of it. I also need to shift it back quite a bit so I will be doing that probably in the next episode and hopefully getting this more fleshed out. I will work on that later when I have more access to it after doing some testing with the bike and then taking it all apart and then welding out everything. You can see how I need a lot more room for cables at the top here so I don't know why I originally shifted the controller all the way up to the front but yeah I should have left a lot more room but it's not hard to move I will definitely move it. I was really hoping to have everything connected and at least writable at the end of this video but unfortunately I ran into two problems as to why I couldn't. One of them was a throttle and brake connector. They are different from the controller that I bought so I will have to make some adaptations adaptations for that. And also the battery lugs are pretty huge so I'll have to find a solution for that also. But I should be able to ride in the next episode hopefully fingers crossed so look forward to that. I want to thank you guys so much for watching all the way to the end. I really appreciate it. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. How is it looking so far? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Would you change anything? Let me know as I'm always curious as to what you guys think. You guys always give me the best most positive comments that really encourage me to keep going on all these projects and I really appreciate that. Even though we're nearing the end of this functionally working, I still have a ton more work to do, a ton more things to add. There's all the aesthetics, the lighting, the electronics, just a whole lot of more work to do. So stay tuned. Thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next one.